This enclosure holds a spider that comes from the depths of the Indian forest that is not only beautiful and elegant, but it's also deadly. It's late at night and this enclosure has just been Mister. The Springtails, our restless cleaning crew, haven't stopped working yet, eating all decaying matter and waste in the soil and therefore keeping the enclosure free of nuisance. There is even a sofoba worm crawling in between the substrate, exploring, searching for a perfect place to pupate, unaware of a ghastly presence. But how could the sofoba know that it's been watched? Our creature's camouflage and stealthiness make it a master of disguise, perfect for its environment, making it look like it's part of the landscape itself. This is why people have called this creature the Indian Ornamental Tree Spider. It belongs to the genus Poesilotheria, species Regalis. It was described by zoologist Reginald Pocock in 1899. This is a massive arboreal spider, endemic to the south of the Indian subcontinent found in between the tropical and subtropical regions of the Eastern and Western Ghats mountain ranges. Able to reach a length of 7 to 9 inches, females being the largest specimens. Besides of the size, this tarantula presents sexual dimorphism once it matures, and although both female and male sport the same color pattern of blacks, whites and greys all over their body, and pink or purplish setae on their carapace, with a chevron pattern and tiger-like stripes on the abdomen and a yellow warning sign under the two front legs. The male will lose almost all the white color from its body, getting a more grey appearance and becoming a scrawny version of itself. And unlike many mature males of other species, the Poesilotheria regalis mature male does not possess tibial hooks. This characteristic turns the task of mating into a dance with the devil. Because of this difference in color, the females tend to be more sought after in the pet trade. But do not let the elegant appearance bedazzle you. This species of tarantula is considered to possess venom of medical concern and equipped with lightning bolt speed, this makes of the Poesilotheria regalis an animal that shouldn't be handled and always treated with caution when working with it. And while there has never been a recorded death from any tarantula bite, if a bite occurs, you will experience extreme pain, local swelling, erythema, and muscle cramps that can last for days and in some cases weeks after being bitten. However, luckily for us, this is a very skittish tarantula that will rather flee instead of biting, but a bite can still occur if the tarantula finds itself cornered and with no escape. In the wild, this tree-dwelling tarantula will primarily feed on flying insects that land close to its nest, such as moths and cicadas, but in captivity they will accept any prey item even as sling, they show ferocity, taking down small to medium-sized crickets and the occasional mealworm, depending on the size of your tarantula. But, due to its fast growth rate, they will leave the smaller prey behind to take on bigger insects like sofobas, large crickets, loctus, and roaches, and having a life expectancy of 10 to 12 years, with some specimens reaching up to 15 years in captivity, there is plenty of time to grow and plenty of bigger bugs to catch. Despite of being called ornamental, these arachnids are not as delicate as their name suggests, since they come from a place that can experience severe weather conditions where temperatures can reach up to 45 degrees Celsius during the dry season and dropping down to 8 degrees Celsius after the rain season. 
in which humidity levels rise up between 75% and 85%. Mastering survival, they will protect themselves from the elements in their heights, up in the trees, inside holes, inside hollow branches and trunks and crevices by lining a thick web curtain at the entrance of their hive and remain there until better weather comes. In captivity, they will thrive between 23 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius and missing your enclosure once a week should keep the environment moist enough for your tarantula. Like any other arboreal species, they will require more vertical space than at ground level. Keeping this in mind, remember that all small slings will burrow, and therefore a vial like this with 2 inches of substrate is ideal. Once your sling reaches about 2 inches in length, you could rehouse it in a Ferrero enclosure or something of similar dimensions, with about 2 inches of substrate to retain humidity and a piece of bark to be used as hiding spot. Once your tarantula outgrows this setup and reaches about 4 inches in length, you could use a Braplast container standing vertically like so, or something similar in size. After this, and when your tarantula reaches somewhere between 6 to 7 inches, you can start thinking on a more permanent enclosure. A 10 gallon tank should be enough. Or you could use an Exoterra small tall enclosure and about 3 to 4 inches of substrate to retain humidity and a proper sized park for a hiding spot. You could also use life plants if you're looking into doing a bioactive setup. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. If you want to keep learning about some wacky spiders and other animals that I keep, subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out any updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.